Okay, here we go. Recording. Welcome. Um, so welcome to Yoga for Calm. Today we're going to do uh, some delicious stuff. It's just good, old-fashioned, awesome, restorative poses. And they're calming for the nervous system. Um, not too, not too challenging as far as um, there being things in the way um, of your, of your, um, you know, distracting you from calming. It's gonna be very supported, um, but find yourself close to a wall so you can do legs up the wall. I'm going to um, pretend I have a wall here, um, so that I can do legs up the wall. Let's see what else. Bolster would be good to have a bolster today. If you don't have a bolster, grab one of those big cushions off your sofa, off the bottom or the back, and or a pillow, a very firm pillow. Um, what else? Maybe, oh. maybe blocks. Yeah, maybe blocks would work. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we'll start with a little forward fold. Bring the bottoms of your feet together. Open the knees apart. You don't have to scooch your um, heels right or your sit bones right up to your heels. You can have some space in here. That'll allow you to fold forward more. And if you're still having a little trouble folding forward, you can sit proper sit bones up on height. Um, let's say like this is your forward fold here, closer to 90 degrees. And it's possible that it's back here. The higher you bring up your sit bones off the floor, your feet on the ground, the easier it is at your 90 for your upper body to be um, less than 90 degrees at an angle from the floor, which allows gravity whew, to grab you and pull you forward. So you don't have to um, use as much core strength to fold forward. So we'll start with an upright posture, a couple deep breaths in through the nose. And a long, long slow sigh out through the mouth. These first few breaths helping you center your awareness, your focus, your physical and mental and emotional aspects of being here in this moment. It prepares the body to relax. As you feel relaxation in the body, let the lips come together, not pressing just relax without clenching the jaw. Inhale through the nose, exhale, long, slow breath through the nose. And then here while you're breathing in and out through your nose, sit up tall, reach up through your spine, hinge forward to where you feel resistance and then ease right into the resistance and let the body hang wherever you are. However far upright or forward you are. Relax your neck and let your head hang. Relax your arms and let your elbows and your shoulders just hang. Oh my gosh. Yes, that's relaxation. And we'll stay here for a few deep rounds of breathing. is very simple warm up for your back low impact And bring your body back upright. So to prepare for legs up the wall, which is next, you're going to scoot yourself over to the wall. And I would have, um, you could have your, your uh, mat down. Um, let's say like the wall right here, your mat coming off the wall, perpendicular to the wall. 
you would scoot if this block were the wall, where your wall, you would come to your side. Knees can bend. You tuck into a little squat here on your side. So you're on either your right or left thigh, your right or left hip, the other leg and hip side of the hip stacked or pelvis stacked. You're going to scoot your cheeks right up flat to the wall. So here's your mat. Your upper body is laying down the length of your mat. You come to your side and you can roll your shoulders down and then lift your legs up. And that should bring you to legs up the wall. So <clears throat> you're on your back, pelvis down, shoulder blades down, legs up the wall, heels resting on the wall. Possibly having the sit bones with a bottom of the cheek right up against the baseboard or wall as well. Important. <sighs> Important to have a little space on both sides of you so you're not right up against the corner of the room or the wall. Arms rest to the side. Yes, kitty. Yes. And the knees might not feel like straightening yet. The hamstrings might feel a little tight. You can rock a little left and right. Wiggle yourself <clears throat> to a comfortable, you might be a little further away from the wall. So you see here this angle here for me right now, the way I'm at is less than 90. If you're on the wall, you're closer to 90. And it's possible that if your cheeks are away from the wall and your heels are leaning back, you might be a little greater than 90 here. That's fine. And this is all going to depend. This angle is really going to depend on what your hamstrings will tolerate. And even if it's a little much, you can bend the knees a little <laughs> to help your hamstrings. This back part of your thigh here, that muscle, um, tolerate the position. You can relax your legs, other than a little inner thigh work to hold the legs up the wall. Arms out to the side. Excuse me, sir. And if you would like, even slide a blanket under your head so that your head isn't, your neck isn't arched back. You feel support in your neck. So here you are, legs up the wall. If you want to um, engage the thighs and push the heels up a little further up the wall. So now you have a little inner thigh work and a little quadricep work, just, just a tiny bit, just to keep the legs straight and up the wall, hold, held towards one another. Oh. Now with your pelvis, your spine down, supported, your shoulder blades down, your head down, your arms down, everything is supported, the legs. You can feel the thighs, the thigh bones just nestling down into the pelvis. You can feel the legs resting over the knee joint and the feet resting over the ankles. And it's a wonderful pose. You can be here for quite a long time. Today we'll be here for a couple minutes. Do a slight variation off this pose. Let the legs open up. Just let the heels slide along the wall. Let the legs open up. And you'll start to feel a little stretch on the inner thighs. It's going to bring the legs to an edge. Now you have the option of supporting the legs with the arms, supporting the legs with blocks. If you have blocks, some of you uh, legs go wide enough that you could prop the thigh on a block and let the block help support the leg but it's 
it's nice to do this real close to where the edge is so you're not entirely lifted away you have the most subtle amount of stress on the tissue on the inner thigh the wall supporting the legs like i'm mimicking here with my hands so that you can actually relax the body stay focused on your deep breathing pattern long exhales that help you ease deeper into the pose that help tension dissolve from the body that help the mind relax arrest take a break from thought If you just joined us, your legs are actually up the wall, heels resting on the wall. Body resting on the surface of the floor. Now it could be nice after you've been here for a little bit to engage in the thighs to push out through the heels find a little more length and then as you relax you might either find a little more spaciousness the legs open up more or the hamstrings might just appreciate that extra length they're being drawn into welcome just continue to have the arms resting down by your side and take a few more breaths here The knees are going to stay open. You're just going to bend the knees, slide the feet back, oh my God. back together. So the feet are on the wall, the knees are apart. And if you want to even take the hands down inside the knees and help guide the knees away from each other, knees towards the wall. You don't have to apply that pressure. You could just let the hands rest here to the side. Couple breaths. And a release to this, you can slide your feet back up the wall just a bit. Bring your knees back together. You can push into the wall, rock side to side, and pull your pelvis, your body, your spine, walk it a little further up the mat. If you're on a slick floor, it could just be fun to press your feet to the wall and push away and give yourself maybe somewhere between um, around a foot or so of hips away from the wall. And then arms out to the side, hug the core in strong around the waist and let the knees come over to the side, either side, we'll do one side first. <clears throat> if this is a little bit too much of a squat, now in this 
um, deep flexion of the hips, your pelvis is going to start to tilt around. Your low back might flatten a little or even round a little. That's fine. Um, you just come over really into this little curled up squat on your side. But you roll your right shoulder blade. If you're going to the left, your right shoulder blade down. If you're going to the right, your left shoulder blade down. So there's a twist in the spine. You may not twist as much as you normally can because you're in this little tucked position. And if it's a little much with the feet apart, or maybe a stretch to the outside, it's important to have some support so you can prop the outside of the lower leg up. Or if the lower leg goes all the way down, but the upper leg is just hovering here in space, you can put some support between the legs. Oh. I'm not going to hold this too long. It's just a little warm up. And if you used any support to prop the other leg up, when you come out of it, take that support with you to the other side. First engage, remove, then remove, and then roll the pelvis back flat, legs back on the wall, and then walk your feet over to the other side. And then you might need that same support in that same way that you did on the other side. You might not. Each side might be a little different. Your feet are kind of tucked up. Again, if this is too much, just slide your body, your pelvis away from the wall a little more. We are not such a um, squat position on your side. Roll your opposite shoulder down, side opposite your twist, and then relax here. Oh. Now in between. I think suppose if you've left your lights on, I have lights on here only for lighting to film for you. But if you have lights on, feel free to dim them. Draw the blinds down. Let the light in the room dim. And with less light on the eyes, you can further support calming of the nervous system. Less stimuli to the nervous system. And your last breath here. No core engagement, bring the legs back up, remove the props. And this time, once you go all the way to the opposite side and take everything, excuse me again, sir, go all the way over to the side and press yourself upright. You're going to move away from the wall. So there's still a wall here. I'll use my blocks. Your feet could be on the wall. Your knees about 90 degrees. Your pelvis, your hip joint about 90 degrees. Okay. Um, could be more. That's just an approximate. So with your bottom leg sting, just like it is, lift your top leg and draw the shin back. So you're going to rest your knee behind the ankle. You'll possibly even prop this, this knee up with support. Because as the knee comes down here, you're going to come into a twist back this way. You're going to feel extra stretch in here and possibly down through the inner side of your groin of your top leg or the inner thigh. This is where you're going to use your bolster. So now you're facing down the length of your bolster. You're twisting over to face down to the bolster. Draw your bolster or your pillow or your cushion right up to the top of your down thigh. Okay? So the bolster, can you see that? Because this guy has to hog the camera. How do you do this? Why? You um, bring that bolster right here. Hands are going to come down to the floor. Pick the pelvis up. I like to pick the pelvis up just to relax and let the spine lengthen and stretch to get the pelvis back down. So you pick up, you kind of hang the hips off the arms, off the spine, 
just supported by the arms. Set the side of the hip down and the thigh down. Okay, and now you have this long bolster. You're going to lay down over the bolster, probably facing the direction of your knees at first. Now, if laying down over the bolster, so your belly, your ribs, your chest, face down in the bolster as you're twisting your top side rib cage down as if you wanted to twist it all the way through and around to the other side, you're going to lay over this support. Now, this could be um, a long distance for some of us. So lifting the bolster up, prop it up with a block you can, and then lay down over this inclined bolster, rest the head down. Oh my gosh, this is like the most delicious thing ever. If you thought legs up the wall was great. Oh. So I want you to feel support. You're gonna feel a little bit of stress, the most minimal stress in the spine. It's more like supported stillness. Um, supported non-neutral stillness. Your spine isn't going to be neutral, but even with the twist, you don't feel a lot of discomfort. If you let the torso rest here on your support, wherever you've come down to, maybe your knees propped up. And if this whole knee situation here just doesn't feel good on the hips, you can bring your top leg back forward and rest it on top of the bottom leg. This is fine to be in here. You're still offering stress on the spine with the stress, with the twist. Wherever you are, apologize if you couldn't hear me there. Wherever you are, rest into your support. You might exaggerate your first few breaths. Long, slow exhales. Now I'm going to count a few cycles of breath for you. We'll be here for a little bit longer. I won't continue to count so you can have the peace and quiet of being here, whether you're participating in the breath exercise or not. So the arms are resting, forearms down, elbows hanging off so you don't have any pressure or weight bearing in your shoulders. It's important that you take a deep breath in. So we're going to count. Inhale for three two, one, pause at the top, and then exhale for at least four, maybe five. Breathe in. A longer breath out. So for more mental people, just having that outcome orientation can actually stir up a little anxiety or stress. If the counting does that, don't count. If the counting helps you feel some type of boundary or sense of safety or comfort in the purpose of counting, the structure supports you to relax more deeply and let yourself count. If your gut can just sense a deep breath in and a longer breath out, go with your gut. Whatever you do, let yourself be calm. We'll say we stay here for about six more long breaths. About one minute. If you want, lift up. You lengthen, lengthen all the way through the spine. And you might possibly turn <clears throat> your head all the way around. <clears throat> Place the opposite cheek down. So you've deepened your twist for your last four to five breaths.
Finish this last exhale. Without being in a hurry to come out, first support the torso with palms down. And strong arms lift you up, strong core support the spine. And then we'll set up and go to the other side. A real simple way to go to the other side is to bring the hands down, swivel on the feet, slide the pelvis over to the other side of the <clears throat> mat and lay the legs down on the other side. Now come around a little bit slower. Your body actually normalized into a twist. So to counter twist the opposite way, it might feel a little bit more resistance at first. You have the opposite thigh down, it's your lower thigh is down, hip down. Pick the pelvis and thigh up, the knee can rest down. Reach the thigh and sit bone down. Lengthen up through the spine, draw in a nice long breath in and then lay down. Twisting the other way. We do the same thing we did on the other side. Give yourself a full breath in, so count at least three seconds. And then let that exhale slowly trickle out at least four or five, one or two seconds longer than your breath in. And if you want to twist a little further, you can lift up, lengthen the spine, and come down, taking the other cheek down. You finish up this exhale. Again, the hands back under the body. Press down, lift up. The one twist, come back around to the center. You can move your prop entirely off. We'll come back around, knees bent. So the wall is still here. You could scoot your body away. Plant your feet on the wall so your ankles are flexed at 90 degrees. You can straighten your legs and you just use a little leverage as you push into the wall if you've got to walk your sit bones back a little further plant your hands do a little counter pose here with strength in the body hands on the ground staff pose core strong support a tall spine shoulders relaxed Good. Reawaken core, pelvic floor, hip flexors, and the muscles up the spine. Oh. Good. And then hands bound this by the side to support yourself as you recline all the way back. Then you come all the way back. Your feet might be an inch or two away from the wall. You certainly don't want a sticky mat and the feet stuck on the wall, creating any kind of compression in the joints. Create as much space through the body as possible. Now, if your foot is slightly on the wall, that could provide both a little bit of bracing and leverage to work into the hips to get a nice deep stretch. 
but also to help you leverage and hold your body firm flat to the floor. Bring your right leg in and release the fingers around the knee. Pull the thigh into the belly. You get a nice deep flex here in the right hip. Just squeeze your thigh down. Try to relax the tissue in the hip flexor. The muscles, the connective tissue. You'll get a little stretch around the bottom side of the glute through the quad. A nice massage of your tissue in your hip flexor areas. Now, if you have a strap, you can use a strap. So feel free to use a strap, a scarf, a towel to loop around the foot to lengthen the leg. And focus here more as the bow of the leg towards you. If there's a little bend in the knee, that's okay. You can also interlace the fingers behind the right hamstring. Use the arm to help fold the leg into you. And you're going to run into a little trouble here. if Your hamstring feels tight and your leg's back up here and you can't grab without lifting up. I want you to relax and ground the spine into the floor and use some type of support, whether it be the arms or the strap, to help bow the leg towards you. Now, strap around the foot is fine. Hand to the foot is fine. Keep the head, the shoulders down. Take a few breaths. You find a place where you can let the leg rest at its edge, supported mostly by this external support, as in not in the leg, but outside the leg with the strap, with the arms. You have just enough engagement in the leg to keep the leg straight. It might be possible that the leg is entirely supported by a strap for your arms to do the best you can to support the leg without from outside itself, outside the leg, meaning not in the leg. You can let the leg open up just a tiny bit to the right. You're going to move into a half happy baby. So bend the knee, bring your arm inside the leg. You're either holding the ankle, the shin, or the outer edge of the foot. As you bend the knee and bring the thigh down towards the floor, the knee towards the floor. You get even deeper flexion here in the hip. And again, if your left leg is still on the ground and you engage your thigh, ground into the wall, and that'll help you keep the left side of the body down. A little bit more active posture relative to what we've been doing. Not to stay here long, just to generate a little bit of heat and strength. You're going to circle the knee out to the side, bring the foot in towards the right or the left inner thigh, and then release the leg and put the foot on the floor. The knee is bent and the hip out to the side. It's like a reclined tree pose. So if you look at me head on, my back is on the floor, looking from not head on but top down. This is what I look like, hip open, knee bent foot resting on the floor inside the left leg and then everything can relax hands by the side if you're using a strap just let it go now if your right knee is gonna hang it out here in space feel free to put a blanket or bolster not bolster um bolster bolster works or blocks under the leg that way it can rest wherever it's at it's fully relaxed resting into some support
if your body's relaxed a little, you can adjust your prop if you're supported. And let the hip open a little further into whatever new edge you've gained. One more cycle of breath. And lift your right knee up. And then straighten your right leg. Let the heel slide across the floor and push your right foot towards or into the wall. As your ground was strengthened to the left leg, or right leg, bring the left leg hand, hands around the shin. You pull the thigh to the belly. Now ease into this. You find an edge. Inhale deeply. Exhale deeper. Relax further into the pose each time. Your relaxation, your nervous system calming, re release of tension, even if it's mental tension, emotional tension. This helps you calm and create more space. And then straighten your left leg, supporting the leg with strap or arms, and bow your straightening leg towards you. Shoulders stay relaxed. Head resting, relaxed, supported. You bring the arm inside the left knee, you bend the knee and draw the foot over the knee. You bring the thigh or knee towards the floor for half, half a baby. Anchoring through the right foot, either into that imaginary wall, the physical wall, the strong right thigh, the glute on the floor, the core around the waist, active, both shoulder blades on the floor, on the support. And then sweeping the knee out wide, bending the knee more deeply, bringing your foot all the way into the inside of the right leg, the hip open, the knee either hovering, floating, or resting into some surface like a block, a bolster, even a blanket, if you don't need a lot of support. You feel, you sense, you're aware of Everything in your awareness is starting to slow down. Sounds may become clearer, colors may shift. You can have a softer gaze, get clarity in what you witness.
couple more breaths. And a little engagement to bring the left knee back up. Take the left leg straight. Put your arms overhead. Push the ball to your feet into the floor. Flat the floor of the wall. And stretch long. Arms overhead. You can even arch your back. You can even arch your hips up off the floor. Just reach. And then arms back by your side. Knees bend. Push yourself over to your side. Feel your spine relax. Use your arms, your core to support, and lift the body back upright. And come upright to seated. So you'll want blocks and a bolster for the next pose. Possibly even a uh, strap. I'll demonstrate with a strap for you. Um, you can take the blocks and set them. They're perpendicular to the length of the mat um, and about far enough apart that you can, with stability, rest the bolster right on top so it lifts up. You're going to rest your legs down the, um, on top of and down <clears throat> the bolster. You can use a strap to help hold your legs together just above the knees, or you could use a blanket and sort of create a burrito for your legs. You just drape the blanket here over, or a towel over the bolster, put your legs up here, and then wrap, wrap your legs up, tuck it under, just enough to hold the legs together. That's all you need. Now, if you're using a strap, you just make a hole large enough for your legs. You thread your legs through the hole of the strap. Cinch this down gently, nothing real tight, just enough to keep the legs together, <clears throat> but there's plenty of play in this. Scoot yourself forward to the, the back of the thighs or the hamstrings, but right up to the edge of your bolster or your cushions, you could stack cushions, and you recline back. Now you can totally relax the legs. I just lean into the strap. <clears throat> the legs are elevated. A little bit of hinge in the hip takes a lot of pressure off your hip flexors. So you can wiggle your pelvis flat, neutral to the floor or neutral with the spine. Arms up to the side. And further support, if you'd like, slide a blanket under your head. You could even um, scrunch the blanket up around the head like a little nest and let the head just rest in this nest. Arms out to the side, palms up. Give an external rotation of the arms to help open the chest, across the collarbones, across the front of the shoulders. And keep just very light structure with your breath, a long, slow inhale, a little bit longer, slower exhale. Lips are still together, but jaws relaxed. Teeth are not clenching, but relaxed. Tongue is relaxed in the mouth, off the roof of the mouth. You further feel the relaxation through the jaw, move up the cheekbones and around the eyes, the eye sockets, you feel the eyes rest in the eye sockets. And then the skin and the muscles on the temples and across the forehead. And, Across the side of the head and around the ears, just relaxes. Top of the head, relaxed and everything supported. And while you're lying here supported, the, the mind can love to engage you little tools that you can use to help clear, release the mind of story, of 
some objective is to imagine you're lying <clears throat> on a floor or beach or grass, some surface looking up to the sky, the eyes barely open, the gaze soft into a blue sky and each little puff of white cloud that you see drifting across your field of vision is like a thought drifting through the mind. You know, you could fix your gaze or your awareness onto this image cloud or thought, or you could relax your gaze and let it just drift beyond your awareness out of field of view, out of the field of your consciousness or awareness. That way, acknowledging that it's there, not pretending that it's not there when it really is, but also conditioning an attachment to it, the release of focused thought, story. Soft gaze and soft mind. Feel, sense, appreciate the calming breath in, the even more calming breath out. You are welcome to remain here longer. You can even stay here for the rest of the practice. Let this pose be your final resting pose. Or I can give you an alternative final resting pose. So to come out, knees bent, slide the strap or blanket off the legs, hold to the side, and come upright. You could just leave your setup the way it is and adjust your, your supports so that <clears throat> your bolster is more at an angle and your blocks are supporting the bolster so there's more of a, an incline there. And a little blanket under the knees would be nice if you're going to do uh, butterfly legs, blocks on the outside of the knees, blankets on the outside of the knees. Um, I'll show you option with the strap. Um, you'd make just a nice large loop. Take the strap around the low back. And then with a butterfly, loop it around the feet together, right around the outside. And at the loose end of the tab, you just draw the feet in. You can recline back into your support. Also a blanket here behind the head to support just here so that the neck isn't too far open and uncomfortable.
so the head's slightly supported if it if it feels right for you and this is an option if this doesn't feel right you can even further put blocks or blankets or um, pillows under the knees to support arms just draped open off the side of the bolster hands to the side palms up excellent delicious pose there alternatively without the strap on the feet the legs straight even the knees um, <clears throat> Just draped over a, a blanket, a cushion is fine if you prefer not to have straight legs or bent knees, <clears throat> as in butterfly bent knees. If you'd rather have a little support under the knees, blanket, pillows, bolster, that's fine. I recommend you have the heels supported on blocks or the floor so that the legs aren't dangling above the floor. They're supported as well through the heel. You find an edge, you tap into breathing and you melt into your support. Let the body be fully received without any effort to support yourself. Let yourself wiggle and squirm until you feel totally relaxed, supported and at ease. Another tool for clearing the mind for this concept of emptying or hollowing out. Going deeper than just a clear mind, but setting aside even emotion, attachment to sensation in the body. Focus just on the breath. And with every exhale, like a breeze, just washing like a, a wave of calming, cooling, warming, whatever supports you, water to cleanse you, to wash away the distractions, the density, the the hitches and the attachments. Clearing, cleansing the slate, if you will. And there, as if you're just watching nature, watching the landscape, the scene unfold without attachment to it, observing what comes and goes. this point, even releasing effort to control breath and letting the body instinctively take over breathing, you are fully relaxed, watching, being.
calm and the stillness that you've created. Allow everything to remain still, but only deepen the breath in. Take a full inhale. And then a slow exhale. Try to contract the core in the rib cage in and squeeze out every last drop. And at the bottom of that breath, hold the breath out. Maybe for a second, two, possibly even three, without creating more anxiety or stress. Just hold it out. And inhale. Slow exhale. slow as you need to go to completely squeeze every last drop of breath out and hold. Breathe. Next breath in is deep with a normal deep exhale. And then we breathe fully in and out through the nose, give the fingers and toes a wiggle, eventually the wrists and ankles, knees and elbows, shoulders and hips. Release yourself from any support and go over to the side. Easy to come up, right? Comfortable cross of the legs. Support under the pelvis. So lift the hips up off the floor if that helps your hips relax. Ground through the sit bones and sit tall through the spine. With shoulders relaxed and just a easy bow of the chin. To bring the eyes closed or gaze down inward somewhere in your trunk, your torso, aware of both your physical body, your feelings, your heart, your mind, and your thoughts. And then that part of you that just can sit aside and witness and watch you and every part of you. Bring the hands either together, palm to palm at the heart, or stacked over the heart. Breathe into this space, hands around the chest, expand the rib cage, your lungs wrap around and hug with a gently, gentle squeeze of the heart and an open mouth sigh to let go. Again. The teacher in me honors the teacher in you. Namaste. So I hope you enjoyed your calm. Take your time. Stay as long as you'd like. Um, and let that, that ease, that calm, that clarity stick with you. It's, it's a part of you. You've created it. Simply come back to it through memory and, and deep breathing and, and allowing yourself to sit in stillness and be. So thank you for sharing that with me today. And I'll see you next time. Bye.